And Joe, you are represented Buen. Tell us what Buen is. So Buen stands for the Baptist Union Environment Network. Fantastic. And Joe just told me earlier that he is a church in Tring, minister there, the furthest from any coastal place. So he is, you know, making the most of all that sea air that we've got at the moment. So are you ready? Yeah. On your marks, get set, go. So my hello, my name is Joe and I'm one of the ministers at High Street Baptist Church in Tring. The Bible tells us, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it was good. It was buen. And today I'm sharing with you on behalf of the Baptist Union Environment Network, buen, about a conversation that they would like us to have as Baptists together, to have around the place of creation care in the gospel, and therefore its place in the ministry of our churches. As Christians, we believe God spoke forth all creation and seeing what was made was good, he invited his people to share in its creation. Therefore, we are called and we're equipped to be stewards of creation and ambassadors of God's love and goodness throughout the world. Yet, often, we can be silent bystanders, can't we? Silent bystanders to the, abu the abuse of creation, locally, nationally, and worldwide. Why is this? Some in our church families and many in our communities may well say, isn't creation care just a, just a middle-class angst? You know, for those who have the time and the money to worry about it, and they can actively do something about it. But it's not a primary concern for everyone, not the heart of the gospel, is it? Perhaps there's some truth there. For example, the environmental justice protests that we see in the media often appear to have a lack of diverse people groups represented. There's almost always an increased cost for locally sourced, organic, animal-friendly and fair trade products, let alone the elevated costs of footprint reducing, carbon footprint reducing technologies such as electric vehicles. Creation care can feel like a luxury, and with life circumstances already stretched, many struggle to see how they can make a meaningful difference to the global issues that encompass environmental injustice, such as the overconsumption of fossil fuels. Yet, in the last year or so, there has been an increase in awareness about the environmental issues, thanks in part to the media hype around COP26, and although the Baptist Missionary Society and others tell us about the terrible impacts of climate change amongst the world's poorest people, the truth is that people in our society often hear more about creation care from the passionate words of Greta Thunberg than they do from the word of God. And this pains me. This pains me because what does this say about our witness and our worship of a loving creator God? Colossians 1 says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. And Jesus reconciles to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the, co the cross. This is the good news of God's grace. God includes his children and the whole community of creation in Christ's redeeming and reconciling work of the cross. Creation isn't excluded from the gospel, it's included. But for now, just uh, as we are, creation is subject to the brokenness of sin. Romans 8 says the whole creation has been groaning as the pains of childbirth. But, Paul goes on to write, creation will be liberated as God's children are and will share in its eternal glory. So then, what does this mean for our discipleship as individuals and corporately as our church families? Well, if you can indulge me for just a moment. 
My beautiful wife has given birth to two beautiful children. I'll embarrass her on this when she reads it later, watches it later. But I'll be honest, at times during a very difficult pregnancy and the pains of labor, I personally felt quite helpless. But I wasn't helpless. I was there to encourage and to support, to care for her and to show her my love by being with her. And likewise, as disciples, we are not helpless to combat environmental injustice across the globe. Our mandate is unity in God's great family and to love that which God created and reconciles to himself, which includes not just humanity, but all creation. We're all in it together. So how does this impact our discipleship and our mission then? Well, in our own context, we can consider the choices that we make that contribute to, among other things, the overconsumption and the pollution of natural resources. We can all in some way refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle and repair. In our own context, we can communicate the good news in creative way that stimulates positive discussion in our communities about the significance of creation care and environmental justice issues. Jesus himself used eco-imagery, didn't he? To help people understand the kingdom of God. And this is something that we can connect with afresh as we purposefully engage through the power of the Holy Spirit in our responsibility to love all that God has created. And in our own context, we can reconnect with creation in our witness and our worship of God together. And for our church families, this means that creation care ought not to be done by a project, as a project by those with a green passion, nor as a token service at harvest, but as an integral aspect of our calling and our mission that permeates the DNA of our teaching, our worship, our stewardship, and our outreach. And so as Baptists together, perhaps one of the conversations for the coming year might be, how can my church take a bigger view of creation care and live out the gospel truth that God so loves the world? Thank you. Fantastic and extremely helpful because he posed the question for us all to have a conversation right at the end there. How can my church take a bigger view of creation care?